And Father, even as we interact with others, you you helped us, O oh God, to be able to be a witness to those that we came into contact with. And tonight we look to you and to your word, seeking, O oh God, for you to touch us once again, to fill us with your Holy Spirit. And I pray, O oh God, as we take time this evening to worship you in song, as we look to your word later on, we ask, O oh God, that your holy presence will envelop us wherever we find ourselves. I pray a blessing over the speaker tonight, even as he will share with us that he will sense your presence. And Lord, as he has prepared himself to share with us that your Holy Spirit will guide him and place the words in his mouth that he needs to speak tonight. I thank you, Lord, for those that are joining us tonight, and I ask wherever they are, they will feel the warmth of your presence. In Jesus' name, Amen. As we begin our devotion this evening, I want to read uh, the responsive reading, 582. And he talks about redemption. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by, the, by faith into this place, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation work at patience, and patience experience and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet for adventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward, commended his love toward us, in that while we yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. For if when we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. The reading is taken from Romans chapter 5 verses 1 to 11. This evening we're going to start singing, I sing praises to your holy name and as we sing I want you wherever you find yourself to join us as we join together in song this evening.
we worship Him, we honor Him, we stand in awe of who He is, the Holy God, the Creator of the universe, who sent His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for your sins and for mine. And we can only give Him glory and honor. There is nothing we can do in our own strength. We can worship Him. We can lift up His holy name. And as the psalmist says, As the deer pants for the water, so our souls must long for Him. That we will not think of the things of this world as the ultimate goal, but we'll think of our Heavenly Father as the one we will see after. Yes, we need the material things of this world to live, to survive, but we need God more than all of those things. And so as the deer that pants for the water, so our soul longs for Him tonight. Hallelujah.
that he will continue to be the one that we hold on to our solid rock and so even as we have come together tonight we have a special guest with us and i'm going to call our brother morgan to come and uh, share with us god's word what god has laid on his heart and so it's my privilege my opportunity tonight to welcome Mervyn Morgan to Morningside Community Church. Amen. Thank you. Good evening, one and all. You may be seated. For those of you at home, you may be seated too. Firstly, I want to thank the Lord for this privilege to minister His Word. Uh, and I want to thank Pastor Rod for this opportunity and the board. Uh, I see the clock is not working yet, so <laughs> I need a bell or something like that. Okay, let's get down to it. Uh, there is a positive side of being the last person to speak about a topic uh, that you can cut down you know, lots of information because your predecessors have already covered it. But the downside of that is uh, they steal your ideas. <laughs> so I'm praying, and as Pastor prayed, uh, that uh, I will try to bring some fresh insights and hopefully the Lord will use me. Uh, to bring those insights and maybe we learn something. But most of what I'm going to speak about is we we know about it because we as Christians we we've grown up in uh, the ecclesia, the church, and we have heard these terms. But I'm just trying to put it into perspective on this topic of hope. We've heard about being saved by grace through faith and we uh, read in Ephesians 2 8 for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourself it is a gift of God so we are saved by grace we also read and read in scripture we are saved by his mercy in Titus 3 5 the writer says not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy, he saved us through the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. So we saved by grace, we are saved by mercy. But we are also saved by hope. And that is my text tonight, my theme tonight. We are saved by hope. And my text, my key text is Romans 8, verses 24 to 25. And Paul says, For we were saved in this hope, but hope that he seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with perseverance. When we look at the definition of hope, according to the dictionary and according to our experience, Hope is to look with expectation, with desire and confidence. It's a feeling of trust in a promise. We cling to that possibility. It also has a theological meaning. It has an eschatological or futuristic aspect, which enables Christians to bear with the suffering of this present condition. And through this hope, we witness to the dying world of the faith, in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we're going to uh, look at three aspects. There are many aspects, but we are limited for time. We're going to look at three aspects of this Christian hope, which prayerfully and hopefully will evict us from this hopelessness we oftentimes find ourselves in. 
We can look at parallels between our lives and those of the Old Testament heroes of faith, such as Jeremiah and Joseph, a touch of my name. 